So you might have some family members or friends in your life who you'd like to include in your wedding, but you don't want to have them in your wedding party. So you don't want them to be bridesmaids or groomsmen, but you want them to do something. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to count down a list of some interesting, hopefully, and unique ideas for how to include those people in your wedding. And this can work in addition to your bridesmaids and groomsmen, or if you don't want to have a wedding party at all, you can just do these things instead of that. My name's Brittany, and on this channel I talk about all kinds of wedding stuff that I think is interesting, like having a small wedding, budget wedding, things that I don't think are talked about enough. I think a lot of what goes on in the wedding industry is a little bit over the top in my opinion and so I'm just always looking for ways to do things a little bit differently. So if that's interesting to you, consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and watching me blab more about wedding stuff. And at the end of this video I'll include a few things that you should not do when you are trying to include your friends and family members in your wedding. So number 10 is to have a friend or family member officiate your wedding. This is obviously not going to work for everybody, but if you have somebody who's really personable, who knows you guys well, and who's willing to kind of go through the paperwork stuff, you could have that person officiate your wedding. And of course, if you're not getting married in a particular religious dom denomination or something like that. It also depends on where you live in the world. Some states I know you can't do this, or it's just a little bit more complicated to do this. I'm not totally sure about Canada, um, but anyway, check this out wherever you live and see if you can have your friend or family member officiate your wedding. It's also really nice that you can work with this person to write your wedding ceremony script together and get it exactly how you want and um, a lot of times you can't really do that when it's an officiant who you don't know well you you just don't have the opportunity to meet with them several times but if it's a friend or family member you can work with them very closely and as much as you want the weddings that I've been to personally that have had a friend or a family member officiate have been the best ones because they know you they know stories about you they can add little jokes and anecdotes and it just feels so much more personalized than weddings that I've been to where it's an officiant who didn't really didn't necessarily know the couple that well okay number nine let them sing a song or do a reading obviously they should probably have a good voice if you're gonna be asking Asking them to sing a song and they should be really comfortable with this actually anything that you ask your friends or family members to do make sure they're super comfortable with it don't just kind of assign something to them and then as far as having them do a reading I think this is a pretty standard way of involving somebody in your wedding who's not in your wedding party if you need any ideas for wedding readings I have literally spent weeks compiling wedding readings from songs books movies literature etc so I'll put links to that down below or if you're confident in your friends and family members you could let them choose the readings for you. Number eight is a little bit unconventional. It's to let your friends and family members put together a time capsule for you. So some couples decide that they want to include a time capsule ceremony in their wedding, in their greater wedding ceremony, which essentially just means putting special objects into a cool box, locking it up during the ceremony, saying a few words or the, the officiant says a few words, and then you have like a ceremonial burial of the time capsule you don't really actually have to bury it but you you lock it up and you plan to open it like on your 20th wedding anniversary or something like that so what you can do is you can assign this task to a responsible family member or friends whose job it is to is to collect objects from other guests who are coming to your wedding and put them all gather them all up and just like have them ready for the wedding ceremony number seven is also somewhat unconventional I guess it's to ask your family and friends to be flower girls flower women in charge of the flower girls ring bearers uh, master of the ring bearers if you've seen some of these videos on the internet of like grandmas being the flower girls or um, there's one I saw of a guy a man maybe like the bride's brother or something I'm not sure who had flower petals in a fanny pack and was throwing the petals so just to give you guys a little example of this we have asked my sister-in-law who is a grown adult my brother's wife to be our flower girl or like our head flower girl I guess I also would like my nieces to participate in this and maybe my nephew and so she'll have like a little pack of kids with her uh, and they'll all be flower people so just because we have this traditional idea of like little girls as flower girls and little boys as ring bears it doesn't have to be that way you can really have fun with these roles and use it as an opportunity to involve some other people in your wedding number six is to let them lead a game or activity and this might be a little tricky during the wedding ceremony itself you probably don't have like a game or activity plan during the wedding ceremony but you could definitely make this work during the reception or during the rehearsal dinner the night before the wedding so for example 
example, at my friend's wedding, she had another friend of hers run the shoe game. So that friend was responsible for coming up for with all the questions for the shoe game and for running it, kind of being the MC during that. If you have any outgoing friends or family members who you think might be comfortable with this responsibility, then maybe think about offering that to them. All right, number five, guys. If you are religious, ask your friends or family members if they'd like to lead a prayer. If you're not religious, ask them if they would like to give some kind of toast at the reception. Number four, ask them what they're good at and then ask them to do something based on that skill or talent. Instead of sticking your friends or family members with something that they might not necessarily be comfortable with or good at, ask them if they can bake, ask them if they can dance, maybe they can teach you how to do your first dance. You might need a small army to help you DIY things, to help you do some arts and crafts. So find out what people are good at and take advantage of that. Number three is really sweet and I mention it because it's something that happened to me as a guest at my friend's wedding and basically what my friend did is she called us out by name at the rehearsal dinner and gave us a small gift and just publicly announced what we mean to her and told the crowd a little bit about our history together and it just made me feel so special in that moment and I think this is something really simple that you can do you don't even have to give anybody a gift but just kind of calling them out by name and letting the crowd know that this person is special to you and that's why they are here tonight Number two is to involve them in the unity ceremony. If you're not planning on doing a unity ceremony, just forget this, but I highly suggest that you include one in your wedding just because it's a really good way of including other friends and family members who don't have another role. And I just made a video on unity ceremony ideas, so if you haven't seen that yet, I will link that down below for you. Just as an example, if you were doing a hand fasting ceremony, part of what a hand fasting ceremony is, is presenting cords to the couple and to the officiant so that they can then wrap their hands together. The people who present the cords are representatives essentially from each of your families. So you would be like, here's my mom to present the green cord from my family, which means XYZ, like maybe the colors mean something to you and your family. There's usually three cords, so that's three roles that you can give to other people, your friends or family members. And you can do the same thing with like sand ceremonies or tree planting ceremonies. There are always symbolic objects in these ceremonies that need to be presented and you can give that role of presenting them to one of your friends or family members. Okay, and we're gonna get to what not to do in just a moment, but first, <laughs> number one is to let them get ready with you. And I put this as number one because I think it's something so easy to do and it makes people feel so special. I think there's sort of this misunderstanding or this belief that you can only have your bridesmaids or only have your wedding party and maybe your mom get ready with you. And that's just so silly. Like there's no, there's no rules as to how you you have to do this. So feel free to invite anyone who's really special to you to come get ready with you on the morning of your wedding. They'll feel really happy and included and you guys can drink mimosas together and hang out and it will be lovely. As long as they are positive, kind people who will make you feel good and who will only bring positivity into the environment. Okay, so here's what not to do when you're assigning roles to your family members and friends. The first thing I kind of already mentioned, which is not to give them jobs. Like don't give them a, some Something that's going to be considered work for them that they're not going to enjoy and make sure you ask them first and ask them in a polite and courteous manner and always make sure that they feel really appreciated doing whatever it is they're doing. Also don't give them a job that requires them to work with and coordinate with a person who they don't know well or who lives really far away because this will just make the whole experience a little bit more stressful and inconvenient for them. So whatever role you give them make sure that they're able to do it independently or with someone who they feel comfortable working with. And finally, any jobs, any jobs for your wedding that you feel like are critical to your happiness, like if this doesn't get done correctly, I'm going to be so upset. Don't give those kind of jobs to your friends and family members. They shouldn't have that kind of pressure on your wedding day. Make sure you're paying someone to do the jobs that you, like if my flowers are not perfect, I'm going to freak out. Give that job to a professional florist, you know? You just don't wanna be in a position of being angry with your friends or family members. Any kind of role that you give them should be kind of a mutual exchange of positivity. Whatever you do, when you're asking your friends or family members to be part of your wedding, to have a special role in your wedding, make sure and say thank you be really let them know that you're really grateful for whatever it is they're doing for you people really want to help you out they want to be involved in your wedding so 
although it may feel like you're burdening them by asking them, as long as you're not asking them to do something that's outside of their skill set or outside of their comfort zone and giving them enough notice and all that, most people will be really happy to help you out on your wedding day. All right, guys, what other ways can we include our friends and family members in our weddings? Let me know in the comments down below and thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.